mini skirt on, dip my body in glitter. Pop, pop, form sneakers, all the boys want a picture. Toot, 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 for a cause, I make rich look richer. Save your breath, baby, I'm not going home with y'all. Mini skirt on, dip my body in glitter. Pop, pop, form sneakers, all the boys want a picture. Toot, 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 for a cause, I make rich look richer. Save your breath, baby, I'm not going home with y'all. This is Fujifilm X-H2S. So officially, this is the very first time to review a non-Sony camera in this channel. So let me tell you why I picked this up for today's video. But this is not sponsored by Fuji. I just rent this to try this out by myself. So I've always wanted to try Fuji cameras because a lot of people is saying Fuji cameras are so much fun to shoot like this, you know, instinctive, classic look, build quality and nice color science and so much fun film simulation. Since I started to film photography and I loved it so much, I have been wanting to try Fuji cameras to experience the great digital photography life. First, I was gonna try X-T4 T5. It's a good, fun camera, right? But before I know, Fuji released this great hybrid camera with a you know, high video spec. And it seems it's fun too, according to Fuji users. So simply, I just wanted to touch this camera. I know most of you guys are Sony shooters, including me. So even if I really love this camera, switching to Fuji from Sony is not gonna happen at this point. But I thought trying other companies' camera is good for expanding my perspective and creativity. Also, I wanted to show you guys something new to this channel. Even though you're not gonna buy Fuji camera at all, this video is gonna be so much fun as always. Let's just see what this can do together. And let's just have fun with this camera today. And hopefully, I wanna talk about the difference between Fuji and Sony and the strength of Sony at the last. So as always, before you're getting into this video, please hit the subscribe if you haven't to grow this channel. I need your support. So before we are diving deep in this camera, let's look at the overall spec first. This is Fujifilm X-H2S. The sensor is 26 megapixel APS-C, which produces the good quality RAW and JPEG photos. It has mechanical and electronic shutter, which allows us to have this crazy high-speed continuous shooting. Also, video spec is amazing. 4 to 2 10 bit ProRes HQ, 4K up to 120fps, 1080p up to 240fps. And this has 6K video, f 2, film simulation, 7 stops, IBIS, face detection, autofocus. So now I'm shooting on X-H2S and Fujinon XF 16-80mm f4, uh, 6.2K ProRes HQ. So, what I can say here is the overall look feels kind of soft and warm relatively. This kind of looks like a Blackmagic Pocket 6K's 6K feeling. You know, it's very sharp, clean, but with a little warmness, which I love so much. So I wasn't that wrong at that location test. It's still sharp and clean. When you zoom in the detail, you can tell the 6K power is right here. But the overall feel is soft and warm relatively in a good way. I'm talking about this later, but the color is so good. That not too much sharpness and soft color tone are making this camera look like Blackmagic 6K. You can use 6.2K without a crop. It's so good recording option, but it's 3 by 2 aspect ratio. But eventually, you're gonna have to crop when you use that footage in 16 by 9 timeline. Also, when it's 6K, the frame rate is up to 30 FPS, and codec is limited. You can use only 10 bits, so be ready for the massive data. When it comes to 4K, you can use all codecs without any limitations. And when it's 60 FPS, which is 2.5 times slow motion, it's not cropped. Isn't it amazing? But you know what, this is APS-C camera, so originally this has 1.5, 1.6 times crop already, you know, when you compare this with full-frame cameras. But at least you don't have to sacrifice resolution to use 4K 60fps. So, the 4K quality is pretty normal. Well, I am the Sony user mainly, so I'm talking about this based on my Sony experience. But about the 4K depiction, it's just good. I don't think it's better or worse than other cameras 4K. Also, you can shoot 4K 120fps on this camera, but you need to select that mode at the different page, and it got some codec limitation. It'll be cropped 1.29 times, but still it's better than FX30, which has 1.5 times crop on 4K 120fps. And the quality is not super awesome, because I see some noises when I zoom in. 
FX30, which is also APS-C camera, has pretty much similar issue. So maybe APS-C cameras are not good at 120 FPS 4K. And this camera can do 1080p up to 240 FPS. But to be honest, this is pretty much useless to me because of this rough image quality. When it's 1080p timeline like uh, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, it'll be fine. But in my environment, I can't use this. So I think it's just a good extra feature. All right, so now I'm filming this on just normal image, no F-log, no film simulation, no HLG, just, you know, the straight out from the camera. But I think it looks so good. Like the skin tone looks natural. You know, the sky is good and dynamic range. The shadow and highlight looks pretty good. So could you forget all things I said so far? Like 6K, 4K, you know, those things are not so important when you talk about this camera. I mean, Fuji camera, color, oh my God. The best color I've ever tasted. I mean, black magic is my most favorite color, but it's raw, so it should be, right? But this camera produces the great color result without log or raw. Just a normal color profile is already great. And I was gonna talk about this later. Well, I'm gonna talk about this more later, but this has a film simulation, which is something like a color preset, like a Sony's creative look. But each of them simulates a film, like, you know, like this, the actual film for the film camera. So those presets look like a true film look, which is absolutely my style. Usually those are for photos, but of course you can use them for video. I'm diving so deep in this film simulation and photo part. Also, this can shoot log, which is F-log2. Honestly, the log quality, uh, F-log2 depiction is pretty normal again. There was nothing so special like the original color and film simulation. But like I said, the color science is different from Sony originally. So the way it's color graded was different. It's hard to explain, but this has certain uniqueness. Like Sony tend to have magenta orange feel. This tend to have more like a blue green-ish feel. And I remember that the actual Fujifilm's film has the green blue power a lot. Like this photo was shot on the film camera with the Fuji film. This is originally shifted to green. So I guess that is Fuji film thing, maybe. But I found some noises on shadow sometimes, even though there was the exposure enough. That is not a crucial weakness. But as the Sony user, I thought the log quality is slightly better in Sony. The low light performance is not that great, honestly. Well, it's not so bad like I can't shoot videos at night, but look at here, the shadow. It's kind of rough, right? There is noise, obviously. I'm okay with this because I can recover this noise by a noise reduction of post. But also, I think detail is broken a little bit. It's still usable if you use a noise reduction at post, but even if you do that, the shadow detail is still broken, not clean and sharp. But that doesn't happen every time, so the low light performance is pretty average as the APS-C camera. All right, for the first time, I'm gonna test Fujifilm autofocus performance. Let's do some simple motion up and down. Oop. So, back and forth. You know, the sun is too strong, so I can't see the monitor. I don't know what's going on. I can see what's going on. So I had a stereotype before, which is like Fuji cameras don't have a good autofocus performance like Sony. But actually, it's great. The focus is fast and accurate. It didn't move back and forth or get lost. Also, tracking ability was more than my expectation. But when the subject moved to the underexposed area, it missed the focus for a while. And this is the different topic, but I just noticed it had a purple fringe. And it was doing okay in this difficult focus situation. But as I expected, it missed the focus a couple of times. So here is the most important thing about autofocus. Basically, this autofocus is pretty good and reliable most of the times. I thought I can trust to use this in making videos, but I didn't like the usability. 
Forced autofocus mode and area are kind of confusing and difficult to use. When I selected the auto area, it didn't focus on what I wanted. And second, this has area selection mode. This was okay. You can put the square on what you want to focus on by this button or touching the screen. Basically, it's like a flexible spot in Sony. But I wanted a little bit more like a focus options, focus area mode options, like wide center fix and zone to use them for different uh, scenarios. To me, honestly, it felt like it was limited. I mean, autofocus performance, I mean, usability, something was limited, I felt that way. Like the workflow, productivity, shooting speed were slow to me. But it has some target detection like human eyes, animals, and cars. The tracking performance was good. Ivy's test. That's why I'm running. Just normal Ivy's. Nothing is boosted. So, not like autofocus, image stabilization was good. It was already good without boosting. You know, that running shot was crazy, not usual. I was kidding, not kidding. I, I was testing, but not serious. But anyway, it was too much for the normal IBIS mode. But for this type of documentary walking around from behind shot, the normal MS stabilization mode was pretty enough. It was naturally shaking, but reduced the big up and down shakes. If you use IBIS plus DIS, I guess something like a active mode in Sony's image stabilization. Of course it was shaking, but considering how fast I was moving and how strong the camera was shaking, I can say this IBIS managed it really well. Maybe it's pretty much close to Sony or even slightly better than Sony. I don't know yet, but that was that good. But you know what? It was difficult to be stable in this slow panning shot. It was shot on normal IVS 80mm. It was difficult to get the smooth panning shot. Okay, now let's talk about the build quality. Okay, first of all, I love this look. It looks like a pretty normal modern mirrorless camera, but the material is so gorgeous. It looks very classic. It's not that big and heavy. It weighs about 1.5 pounds with battery and card. Feels like a7 IV, but I like this grip better. I think this part is doing great job. I like this small dial at left, and nothing is at right. And look at this overall flat design. So this is very classic and solid, sophisticated design, but the usability is also good. First of all, this has 7 custom dials, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this has 12 custom buttons, like 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and here is a small one, 11, and 12. So those buttons and dials give me the good instinctive usability without sacrificing the design. Although it feels a little weird without the wheel here, like Sony, and this structure is new to me. So now it's a little confusing, but if I get to used to this, I'm sure I think I like this build quality better than Sony. Anyway, the overall design is so cool. And this has full-size HDMI, microphone, and headphone, although I don't like this cover. So headphone, and USB-C. And I think the viewfinder and this monitor are better than most of Sony's camera. I had no problem with Sony's viewfinder and monitor, but after using this, now I like those better. But what I hate was the speed. So what I mean by speed is when I touch something, it's slow. Also the menu is slow, like it's okay, but like, it's a little slow to me like, compared to Sony. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not you know, that smooth. Come on. Quick menu. Yeah, something like this. And usually cameras wake up from sleep mode by touching something. Most of the time, it's shutter button. So now it's on, and this is on sleep mode. So I'm gonna push buttons, shutter button. But this doesn't wake up, so this bothers me a lot. So when it goes on sleep mode, I have to turn it on and turn it on again. 
Also, there is one more thing. Like, when you zoom in quickly, like, you see the exposure changes so fast, but the actual exposure doesn't change, but it gets darker or brighter on screen when you zoom in and out. That was also what I didn't like about this camera. And what I like most about this camera is the sound. Like, you know, it vibrates a little when you push the shutter button. Slightly. This is the reason why I keep shooting photos with this continuously. Because I want to hear the sound. So nice. Okay, here we go. Finally, I can talk about the biggest attraction of this camera, which is photography. So about the raw quality, color is so good. In a good way, it's very normal. I don't know how to put it, but it feels a little like nostalgic, something like that. Like it has a certain like a world, certain uniqueness, but still it's normal, still natural. But you know what? I shot about 1500 photos with this camera for this review, but over 1400 photos were shot on JPEG. You know what this means? Okay, here, let's have the main dish of today's video of this camera. JPEG and film simulation, the golden combo that made me want to buy a Fuji camera. Absolutely the best photography experience with a digital camera. I almost felt like I was shooting on film, but actually it's digital, so I don't even have to care about the remaining films. So I guess what I can describe how I feel about this camera is like OMG. I love this so much. First of all, the standard JPEG color is already great. The image is already finished when I pushed this button and all film simulations were lovely. But here are my most favorite films, Classic Neck, Classic Chrome, Pronag, High, and Acros, which is uh, black and white. Those four film simulations were forcing me to take a picture continuously, 1400 photos. So it's impossible to show you all photos I shot uh, with this camera. So please go check my Instagram. I'm gonna post photos shot on this camera. So when it comes to photo autofocus, just single AF for single shot mode, it was actually good. Using single autofocus and walking on a street and snapping by one hand, the flow was so smooth. Everything was flowing like a river going along with the vibe of the city. Okay, how was it? The first Fujifilm review in this channel. I hope you guys are having a great time here. So, I know exactly what I want to say about this camera at the conclusion. If you want to have a perfect, I mean there is no perfect, so almost perfect and reliable camera, still the Sony is the one. Especially the video performance such as the log quality and autofocus performance, it's slightly more reliable in Sony. And in photography too. If you need the serious workhorse camera which can handle many different difficult situations, Sony Photo Specialized Camera is wise option. But this Fuji X-H2S is so much fun camera to shoot with. With Sony, it's fun too, but I think it's a different kind of fun. Sony is more like a business use, and this Fuji particular X-H2S is more like art crafting style, you know what I mean? So here, there is one thing that bothers me a lot right now, at this point. That is, I want to have a Fujifilm camera. Come on. But not for video, because I have Sony a7 III, FX30, Blackmagic 6K, and I can rent whatever I need at that moment. So I don't need the video cameras, but I need, I mean, I want a compact, you know, street snapping camera such as a Fujifilm X-E4 or a Fujifilm X-100V. Maybe I'm gonna try it and see how it goes. 
goes. And I think I will talk about that on my second channel. Or if you guys are interested in that, I can make a video about that here. So this video became a good experience to me. This camera made me realize something that I wouldn't with Sony, which I always shoot with. That is, camera should be fun. You know, those things look like a electronic machine which don't have a soul of uh, people who made. Especially Sony's look like that strongly, like Sony A7R5 X30, uh, made for professional shooters who needs the power to drive their creativity endless. It looks like a machine machine, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't feel that slogan that much from this camera. I felt it's, it's more like a craft work. I can feel that from this design and the, the response to my action. Those things give me the joy of shooting. But after using Fuji, now I can feel some emotional stuff from Sony. Obviously, it's different from Fuji, but I can feel the passion to create the best performance without the, any compromises. And I like that spirit. And when I think about what I want to achieve, the Sony's spirit is close to mine, but as the different side of myself, I, I can sympathize with uh, Fujifilm's spirit. So that's why I want to have a Fuji camera, so I got to talk to my wallet. But anyway, this camera made me uh, realize the camera is so much fun, and thanks to this, now I love Sony's camera more than I used to. So what I want to say is, when you have the moment to you know, buy a camera, I think it's a great idea to prioritize the fun and the joy. Maybe that will give you the amazing and joyful camera life. Okay, that's it for today. If you have any questions, just shoot me anytime, anywhere. And if you like this video, hit the subscribe and like, and I will see you in the next video. Jamata.